I don't lie to nobody. He was a wrecking ball last night. Mm. Strong, accurate, good movement, smart. Um, that's the first time I've seen him fight live. And yeah, no, it's just for me, it's just. It's, it's, I love challenges. Mm. And obviously, the light heavyweight division, anyway, is a challenge. And obviously, I always see it as, as if I'm playing catch up because of my experience and things like that. That's why I train so hard. But um, I'm ready, man. I'm ready to just get in there. Um, anyone that knows me, that knows my personality, knows my mentality, knows my character, is when I say lines and they come, I say, I show it. It's like, when the line, when the line goes and hunts, yeah, it's not because it wants to sometimes, it's because it has to. Do you know what I'm saying? They, they haven't got the option to go and just chill out because then their family don't eat. Do you know what I'm saying? And I got that same mentality. When another lion comes roaring, that means it's challenging, you know, the domain. You know, they come and roar and whatever. People that watch the Discovery Channel, <laughs> David Attenborough, they know what I'm talking about. No, um, all jokes aside, that's literally my mentality. It's, that's, what, that's the world we're in. We're in the boxing world, it's competitive. And um, bring on the challenge. Well, look, you said something there. You said lions have to hunt because they got no choice. You've had choices before. When it came to the Kovalev fight, you were offered step-aside money. Canelo didn't want you to fight him just in case you, you know, ruined his fight. He got his fight in the end anyway, but you were offered step-aside money. There's talk of now, oh, Anthony, can't you just, like, move out the way so Bivol and, and Baturbiev can do it? You have choices. You are choosing the harder option. You are choosing the fights with the crazy, hard-hitting Russians. Why? It's my, it's, it's my mentality. But you know what it is, yeah, for me? You're saying it's, it's a trash, yeah? But... Tomorrow's not promised. And it's not, that's not me thinking negative, that's just reality. And this is an opportunity. Same as going to Russia, opportunity. I almost did it. I almost went out to Russia. If I went out to Russia, yeah, and beat Kovalev in Chile and Bince, a, a young man that's come from nothing, no boxing background, no, um, you know, family, like that's boxed before, nothing, and went to Russia, 12 amateur fights in, um, not, not fought any mainstream fighters or nothing, and went to Russia and beat someone like Kovalev, that would have been history books, and I almost did it. Um, this would be the same thing, but even probably, probably even better because I'm fighting for three belts. Um, I want to do that. If you had got the stoppage in the eighth round against Sergei Kovalev, how different would your life be? And what sort of fighter do you think you'd be now three years later? Because bear in mind, you learned a lot of lessons that night. Um, to be honest, I don't know. Anything I say to answer that question would be fair to Because no one knows what don't exist. <laughs> um, and... I don't know what my life would be like. Again, my life could be worse than it is now. It could have just not been my time to make it to that level. As I said, someone has come from nothing to rise and to all of a sudden, you've got the world in your, hand, world in your hands or whatever. We saw what happened with Tyson Fury. He had to learn to deal with that. He came back and it made him a better man, yes, but maybe I would have dealt with it differently. I don't know, but again, I'm a person that I always count my blessings. And I'm still here. As you said, you know, I'm still looking good. Yeah. You dig? No, I'm Ice. Ice stuff, you know. No, um, but that's, it's just life. This is the way it's meant to be. That's, that's what I believe. Do you think this is... Uh, you know, I know Tundi is all about everything is timing, but it feels like this may well be the timing, right? You're three years down the line from Kovalev. This fight, if it happens as people are talking, it's going to be London, your hometown this time. You're 31 when this fight happens. He'll be nearly 38. Do you think the time's, time's just about right? We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Um, for me, like, the, I feel like the one thing us as humans we're not in control of, as much as we like to think we are, is time. And I feel like, I don't know if that's what Tony means when he says everything is timing, but I feel like as humans, we're not in control of time. Like, there's so much things that happen. So, so much things that happen. To do with time and no one expected COVID. Who was in control then? Mm. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? If people wanted to go away, you couldn't, like, right now our flat's late. <laughs> I want to go back to the ends, the flat is late. It said our flat's even at 11 o'clock, now we're saying 11.40. Time. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, you're not, what you're not in control of, don't give it no energy. The only thing I'm in control of is how I train, the things that I try my best to 
allowing to my life, the things that I try to block out of my life, and how the mentality I, I have to approach things. And I'm just going to keep trying to be the best person I can be. But when it comes to fighting, <laughs> when it comes to swinging, I'm here for it. I'm actually here for it. Um, and my thing is, the reason why I might seem so like nonchalant and I might seem so like, is this guy got no fear in his body? I actually haven't, because I don't care what no one thinks. That's the only time I feel like when people, they're scared of things or they put all this pressure on themselves. Yes, everyone's ambitious or whatever, but I'm here. I'm, I'm actually in this position where everyone around the world, when they talk about light, light heavyweights, they're mentioning my name. That's a madness. To, to, say that to anybody that I grew up with. They're like, what? So no. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, this ain't not even no motivational speech, but it's like, that's just my mentality. Um, I go in there, I give it my all, as I did in Russia. And I swear to you, when I beat someone like Paterviev, it's just it just feels better. Do you get what I'm saying? That like, like, there's a lot of champions that their first fight they fight like for a vacant belt. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying not saying I wouldn't do that. I'm not saying it's easier because all all fights in boxing are hard, but it's how you do it and the 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 way you go about it, or even do your destiny, how it all happens. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm like, I was just saying I'm 30 now. I got them win this fight. My life would just be amazing. It would change. And I feel like now I'm at the age of 30, I'll be able to deal with what it comes with. Before, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how I would, how, how would have dealt with it. It might have went to my head. <laughs> I can't lie. Um, but now again, I've been through a lot more um, trials and tribulations. I've been tested in different ways. And um, I'm so humble with everything. If I could get 55 million tomorrow, I'll still be the same Anthony. Do you know what I'm saying? And I can vouch for that. I can stand in that. Can you tell me about the background that's on your phone? Because I've no. clocked it. No, I don't want to say it on camera. So it's not something you're, you're sharing? No. Why, why do you want to talk about my camera? Why, why do you want to talk about my pornography? <laughs> my pornography is my pornography. Keep my business to myself. You don't need to talk about my pornography. Leave my pornography alone. <laughs> <laughs> He's clocked it. He's clocked it. Okay. All right. Pornography uh, aside, Anthony. Um, <laughs> you said that Arthur Baturbiev was slow. Yeah. Uh, this is something that was presented to him. I don't know if you've seen the clip, but journalists said it to him and uh, he reacted to it. Have you seen his little clip, interview clip? I actually haven't. Can I show you? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Go on, man. Okay. Let's pull it up. Yeah, I was pull it to up. The... Go on, tell him. Tell him. Um, yeah, I'll say it again. He, he was slower than I thought. Literally. When I was seeing the part, even um, Joe Smith Jr., slower than I thought. This is why I like him. This is why I like him. But again, that's what I'm saying. That's false information. Yeah. That's false information. Do you know what I'm saying? People twist words, Chinese whispers. Didn't say he was slow. I said him and Joe Smith Jr. look slower than I thought. Yeah. I don't mean they're slow, slower than I thought. But again, it's, like, his, face is, his face is funny. He's consistently screw facing. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's what I'm saying. This is what we're in the sport for. He's got that cold sort of Russian yeah, steel just, about him though, isn't he? I mean, does, does that just sort of excite you a bit more that, you know, you will come face to face with him at a press conference and that? Like, have you pictured it? Have you given it any sort of thought what that's going to be like? Because he's just sort of Drago, right? Literally, like, yeah, he's, he's staunch. He's staunch, consistent through phase. I was even looking at, um, when I was watching away, and I was like, this guy, <laughs> his facial expression does not change. It does not change. Even that, that video you just showed me was actually like, it was funny. He said, I understand. <laughs> um, we, we put up a, a video of you training with Tundi the other day in the hotel gym and Tyson Fury commented and he said, you look like a heavyweight, Anthony Yard. And you said something back to him. Are you calling it on with Tyson Fury, Anthony? Well, me and Tyson can sing it out. Me and Tyson can sing it <laughs> That's my headline. As he said, as 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 Tassif said, yeah, he wants to fight for the half a B. I'm here for it. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. No, but I'm yeah, he's saying I'm a heavyweight. I can I feel like it would take me about a month or so to touch heavyweight in a healthy way. Yeah. So if Tassif, you know, wants to have the half a B fight, go Saudi Arabia or go somewhere where there's a lot of cash, <laughs> get me in there. 
<laughs> anywhere around the world. Anthony Yard, Tyson Fury is a big seller. Um, so, okay, look, we are waiting for our flight. What are your final reflections on your, your time here in New York? Your second time that you've been, but the first time you've really had a chance to look around and, and, you've, and you've watched Baturbiev. I watched Baturbiev versus Joe Smith Jr. We can't forget about Joe Smith Jr. You know, I don't want him to get, I don't want him to start getting disrespected and all kind of things. He was like, you know, he held a WBO, but and he defended it. So like, he's, a, he's, a, he's a champion. Um, it just wasn't easy night. I think they both looked cold. They both didn't even get a chance to warm up. But um, again, my experience is in, in New York. I got in a, a yellow taxi for the first time, which was excellent. Anyone, that, anyone that's watched that movie, Coming to America, I experienced it. You know, when he shouts that, F you, and he's like, yes, F you too. <laughs> All that stuff, where the cab drivers are consistently beeping at each other for no reason. Um, yeah, I drove down to Queens. Um, Giggs was in, in New York, so we went bowling and that. But yeah, man, I enjoy, I've, I've experienced it a bit better this time. Times Square. It's literally, for me, it's just a, it's another form of London. That's me being real with you. It's just a little bit more pollution. Bigger buildings, which blocks the sun, so I was vexed. I was trying to get my suntan on, trying to get the suntan glow. But all the sun, all the buildings are blocking it. But, um, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's my reflection on New York. I love the city, I love the culture. That's one thing about, I love about um, New York, is the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The culture. Well, it's the fact, look, you're wearing what you're wearing, you don't look out of place here, you know. Obviously, you can pull it off. I can't wear what you're wearing. You can wear anything you want. Yeah. That's me, that's me being real with you. you can wear is that you bigging me up as well, sort of secretly? Well, I'm never trying, I'm never bigging you up. Okay. That's me. You know, I've got a clip of you. Let me show you a no, clip. No, 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 loud, 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 loud. Look, wait, you, wait, if you, if you show me your, your phone background that we discussed, uh, then, then you're allowed to show the clip. You ain't getting me, you ain't getting me, you ain't getting me nicked. <laughs> um, finally, Anthony, why do you beat Arthur Beterbiev? Um, just because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in myself. Um, and this, this whole situation just feels like destiny. You know, there's going to be so many people that are like, oh, you know, it's too early, you know, oh, like, you got this, you got that. Then why am I in the sport? Do you get what I'm saying? Everyone's got an opinion, but they're not in my, posi not in my position. And um, I got there and beat um, Arthur Batavia. <laughs> oh, Anthony, he's a hero. Do you get what I'm saying? It's, I can't believe it. Like, he's, a, he's a superstar now. Everyone has their opinion until something's actually happened. And even when it's happened, they still have the opinion. You know what I'm saying? They'll say, oh, Arthur Petoviev, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't up for the fight or, you know, they'll, they'll come up with something. There'll be something. There'll be, he was old, he was over the hill, oh, we did, he didn't like it, they did something with his water, or something like that. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, there's always going to be some sort of opinion. Um, so for me, it's like, I'll just do what I want to do. And I thought like that's, the, that's the goal of life, to do what you want to do. And, um, yeah, man. The, the, I thought that, another thing as well, is I sit down and think to myself sometimes, I say, take away all this, the limelight, take away all the cameras, take away people like knowing who you are or whatever. Take away what you're doing with your life. When you're old, or when you get older, and you look back and reflect on your life and you say to yourself, ooh, what would have happened if I, do you get what I'm saying? What would have happened if I, if I had that fight? Everyone was saying it's a match, but like even now, if I didn't fight Kovalev, and my career went different, whatever, I would have been like, Imagine I thought Kovalev won that at that time. Do you know what I'm saying? What would have happened? For me, I got more peace of mind knowing what would happen. Do you know what I'm saying? So is it, I don't know. Everyone's built different, isn't it? Do you ever regret turning down the step aside money for Canelo? No. <laughs> well, but I would have regret anything, any, anything in life. That means you're not. That means you don't believe in God. That's just my opinion. If you got regrets like like that, it just means you don't believe in God. If you feel like you're in control of things you haven't seen yet. I don't want to get too deep with you, but that's my belief. Is like, I believe God, God's got my back. I got my own back as well. I believe everyone's got their intuition. Everyone's got their. Some people get the opportunity. Some people don't. But um, I just see that as opportunity. Do you know what I'm saying? Going out and trying to fight on the world stage. Some boxers never get a chance to. I've worked consistently, worked my way up to these positions, and now it's just about making it happen and coming out on top. I've been looking across social media. Obviously, there, there are people that, of course, want to see uh, you know, a Brit like yourself go and challenge for the three belts. There's a lot of voices saying, we just want to see the undisputed fight between Bivol and Baturbiev, and maybe Yard and Boatsy should fight, or Yard should have a, a little fight beforehand and, uh, and move out of the way. 
Wh where's your head at with all of this? I, I'm just going to repeat myself because the, 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 the answer can't change. Mm. Everyone's going to have their opinion. Yeah. I met a guy in the, this airport and he was like, yeah, he's working. A yard, yard. <laughs> he ran from behind the security thing. I'm sure he got in trouble. He's like, yeah, let me get a picture. He took a picture and he said, I think you can do it. He's like, yeah. I don't know, but I just think you can do it, man. Like, good, like, good luck to you and all that kind of stuff. Like, we need a... We need a light heavyweight that's like, you know, that's got something about them and black, etc. You can tell he's into boxing and everyone's got their opinion. Do you get what I'm saying? But I can't focus on everyone's opinion. It's draining. Do you get what I'm saying? Even I got an opinion sometimes. I change my mind sometimes. And well, how am I going to deal with my own brain and try and do whatever not to brain at the same time? It's mad. <laughs> Well, look, I'm just going to give you the mic. I want you to sign us out. You, you looked good with the mic earlier on. Yeah. Um, and I just want you to look down the lens and just tell us something. Give us some bars, whatever you want to do. Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want to know your name. I won't lose, I'm single. This is what I look like. I'm looking like I'm about to go to a concert. Let's have a look at the food. <laughs> <laughs> hey. No, I'm joking. Um, stay tuned, thank you for the support. If you're not supporting, I thank you as well. Um, try to do something better with your life tomorrow. Try and be a better person. Try not to hurt people's feelings, because you don't know what they're going through. Try not to, you know, say hello to someone when you walk past. That's, what, that's like I learned as well in America, we were talking about this earlier. In America, some parts of America, like I went to um, New Jersey today, and it's like, I'm walking down the street, hey, so how you doing? You know what I'm saying? Some guy walked past me, he's like, yeah, man, that's that drip. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's that drip, man. Feel you? Feel me? You know what I'm saying? It's a bit of, I was, uh, my, my walk was a bit different. I was like, yeah, come on, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Hey, where you from, man? You from London? You from London? I hear the accent, man. I hear the accent. Yeah, man, I've been learning one time. But it's like, it just make, leaves you feeling better. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you get the odd person that gives you the dirty look. I was like, why are you, why are you in front of me? But that little compliment. I started doing it to people. I said, how are you doing today? You know what I'm saying? I'm good, sir. How are you? But be nice people, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on, anyway, all this talking. Lions in the camp. Good man, thank you, Anthony. Love him.